All right, ready? Okay, today we're going to talk about wax rims. And my patient's being real cooperative, let us video in here. You want to always take nice, slow, gentle movements when you put wax rims in patients' mouths because their edentulous mouths are sort of tender. We're going to steady the wax rim, and then the first thing we're going to do is mark the midline. So we're looking right down between the nose and the fulcrum of the lip right there, the filtrum. And so we kind of mark this right here in a vertical line with a, I use an explorer because it's safe. And then smile real big for me. And then we want to come down from where the corner of the ale of the nose is, and that marks the cuspid, where the cuspids go. We'll come over to the nose over here and mark where the cuspid. Now, you listen as if you will, smile real wide. Now, at the high smile line, we mark that right at the lip line or even a little above it, and we connect from the cuspid lines. And that gives the lab exactly, this is the midline. And all, don't just use the tip of the nose, always use the middle of the lip there. And mark the cuspids. We're also looking at the plane, the occlusal plane, and this wax rim fits his occlusal plane. Let me see the fox plane. So one inch that you're taught in dental school to use is called a fox plane. And the fox plane, open real wide if you will, and we do look at this and make sure from the ailer Traeger line on the side, you can see that that is uh, pretty parallel. So that gives us the occlusal plane setting the upper teeth. Very good. Now, a lot, of, a lot of wax rims will be a little loose because we use a tri We do not use a solid wax. We use a triad record base with wax rims and they have to be made to come off. And so now you can kind of see my markings and that's very important. Stop. So after we've gotten the uh, upper occlusal rim, we're gonna use the Bard Parker and I'm gonna cut some keyways that we use for mounting purposes and orientation. So I'll, I'll put two keyways, usually back at about the second bicuspid areas and we make a V basically we make a V here and that creates a keyway the next thing that we do once we've established the upper wax rim we're going to take a little Vaseline and we're going to lube that so that our lower wax rim will not stick to it and also our face bone stop it's important to have a hot a hot plate and and a flame a bunch a bunch of burner and one of the things you want to do is always keep keep the hot plate moving through the plane to, to form it, continuously flip it over, go round and round. And then, as we were taught in middle school, the wax rim should be over over the where the occlusal plane is, where the teeth are. And a lot of the labs will just put this wax on here, and so it leaves a little work for us to do to reshape this wax rim to where the wax rim fits actually where the teeth go over the ridge and so we're having to kind of shape this up with the fox plane and lower interiors want to lean forward about 15 degrees and so they've got that about right and so what we do usually I end up having to reshape the posteriors on the lower wax rim and the upper to fit to the occlusal plane stop so you'll notice that we have we have the locators the processing caps embedded in a triad record base and I use hard wax rim, not soft base plate wax. This is hard wax. Now we're coming to the mouth. All right, this is great. Open gently. I like to use a rotating motion like this into the mouth. And then we're centering it over his locators. Very gently pulling the lips out of the way and the tongue is back. And I'm going to put a little gentle pressure on you here in just a minute. And we do feel it just snug in. Feels pretty good, doesn't it, Ulysses? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one thing we're looking for is to see if it's right about the lower incisor edges just about at the vermilion border. If your wax rims are too low, you gotta add to it. If they're too tight, you have to take away from it. Now we're going in with our upper wax rim. And we're gonna kind of test this and I'm gonna hold two hands, gently bite together, all the way together. All right, and we're touching in the posterior back there in the back. All right, great. Okay, open again and relax. Close on your back teeth all the way together. All right, open real wide for me now, please. You can stop. All right, so we saw that our wax rim was hitting prematurely in the molar area, so we're going to use a hot plate. And leaving, I do, we just want the posteriors to come down, and we don't want the lowers to be any more. All right, you see that ruler pan, please? A little clear ruler. So you can remember from dental school, 
that your measurements on the lowers should be about 18 millimeters on the lowers right here, okay? And this, ha this one particular is only at about 14 millimeters. And why that is, I don't know. Our upper should be at about 22 millimeters and we're at 18 millimeters here, okay? So your lab should make your wax rims at 22 on the top and then 18 on the posterior. And let's go back and try this again. Also, we're going to cut keyways on the lower. In dental school, you had to, when you were training to be a dentist, you had to do this yourself. And there was a reason so that you'll know when you have your lab do this, they'll know if they're making them correctly. And if they don't make them correctly, then you've got to come back and make them correctly. All right. As loose as a goose in it right now. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. You want to bite together? Squeeze a little bit. Keep on squeezing. Okay. Okay. Open just a little bit. Okay, so I see that the wax rim needs a little more adjusting here. Again, to keep the hot plate moving through the flame. And this was just a little poochie on his lip here. And okay, I think we're pretty much ready to go back to the mouth now. Again, we're going to rotate with nice, smooth, gentle actions, pull the lips out of the way so the tissues don't get up underneath the record bases. We're going to snug, out, snug it to snug down so good. Again, we're we'll coming with the upper, and it helps to kind of wet the upper. Put a little more suction to it. We're going to rotate that in. And I'm going to steady it with two fingers. Then we're closing your back teeth, if you will. Squeeze hard. Explore. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to connect my middle line here to kind of give the lab a little more mounting orientation. So that was our middle line, and we're going to drag the cuspid line on down and drag the cuspid line on down. And you can see now the V's that I've cut right there. Okay, hold it just a minute for me, anyways. Now, say 66 if you can. 66. 77. 77. Okay, what I was looking for, great. All right, open now, blue blue bite. I was looking to see if there was some freeway space, and there was some freeway space, which you need. Next thing I'm gonna do, you listen, is I'm gonna have your bite together when I tell you, and once you get your teeth together, and this is blue moose, quick setting silicone. Now relax, just a minute, close on your back teeth, squeeze. Squeeze hard, there you go. And I see my lines, keep holding them tight. I see my lines are back together. And this is my centric relation bite. Without teeth, patients, when you tell them to squeeze hard, most pa pa patients will close with the condyles totally seated. There are some patients that will come into a protrusive movement. They're trying to move it, but Ulysses did a good job. So the reason I marked the midline so we have a repeatable centric relation position, very important in dentures, that you don't have a malocclusion that we're in a centric relation. And this sets for about 90 seconds. So now we have our centric relation bite, and I'm gonna, and we're gonna go ahead and take this loose. It's very important to keep up with these bites; they can get lost in shipping. And so I like to go ahead and put the back onto the bottles. This is a locator over denture, and we'll put the bites back on there, and that's gonna go back in the lab box. But I've had cases where this bite got missing, so it's very important. Okay, remember we Vaseline the upper denture for a reason. We're going to put an extra coat on it. And then we're coming over to do a face bow transfer. So we use a water bath. And we're going to put our bite fork in. You can just use hot water if you need to, or you can use a flame. I prefer a water bath, this, this hand out water bath that most of you get when you're in dental school. 
to soften this up. We also have ice cubes in a plastic bowl. We're going to need some cold water to chill this. It's important that your assistant that sets the room up with all this in, order, in proper order. With every orchestra. Now, it doesn't take long in a water bath. That's real soft. We lay it down here. And then we're going to press this with the midline centered. And centering the wax rim, I'm going to bring the, some of the wax over the wax rim here. It's important that you get kind of aimed midline. The fork always comes out to the right side, fairly level. Now, and we want the keyways, we want this wax up in the keyways for orientation purposes. Then we'll come into the plaster bowl here with cold water. And we're going to chill this. And why, the question is, why do you do a face bow? Well, a face bow does, a, does for a couple of good reasons we do a face bow. It does allow us to mount the models on our articulators as, as the maxilla is to the condyle. So it gives us a hinge axis. And why is that important, especially in dentures? In prosthetics, a lot of times, especially in dentures, we have to change the vertical dimension. And if you're going to have mounted models with change of vertical dimension, you need to have a correct hinge axis or it is no longer accurate mounting. So then we can see that it fits back on like this. Okay, and now we're going to go to the mouth. Also, with dentures, it's important that when you set teeth that the incisal plane, the occlusal plane, uh, is not all centered. And when you have a face bow, that reorients it just like it, his maxilla and mandible is in his skull and his face. So for setting of teeth, to make sure that your teeth and size of plane is not incorrect, or the mounting doesn't slip, that's why Facebook. For changing vertical dimension, and also the hinge axis, because teeth don't close straight up and down, they close on a hinge. And so any prematurities, you have a lot more prematurities in your occlusion if you do not use a face bow. So a face bow is absolutely critical in denture prosthetics in my practice, and it should be in your practice if you're committed to excellence. Next thing we're going to do, open real good. We're going to do a face bow transfer, and you can do this with the patient holding this, but I prefer to use an assistant. Again, I'm going to rotate the bite fork back in, and I'm going to make sure it's centered correctly in the keyways. And my assistant Pam is going to put one finger each on the first mole area. Is you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Want to make sure that the patient. Uh, this is a day nine ear bow. Want to make sure the patient doesn't have any hearing aids. This goes into the meatus of the ears. And you want to kind of gently feel it go in. It's not real comfortable to the patient. Notice the assistant puts her thumbs up right there. And we take the transfer assembly. It's important, very important, because we've had this mistake, that you can see the numbers. You see the one and the two. You see the two numbers there? So the number two, you always want to be able to have the numbers face you. And so we slide the number two over the Facebook fork. And there's a flat side right here on the back, if, you can, if the video's getting it. And we can put the, the flat side where it's there, it fits down. Now, we want to drop, this can come up or down, and so you want to be at the ailer trager line from the ailer of the nose to the tragus of the ear. So we drop this down to about where the ailer of the nose is, and we tighten by the number. So I'm tightening the number one tightening screw, and I'm gonna tighten it a little bit, I'm gonna tighten it more. Now notice I'm, I'm stabilizing this with my hand here because it's not real comfortable in a patient's ear. So I'm, as I'm tightening, I'm holding this, otherwise you kind of put a little excessive pressure. And I'm tightening, I'm tightening, and I'm tightening. And ask me why I'm tightening. Thank you for asking that. The reason is because this thing can come loose in the lab and then all this is for naught. So now we're making sure we have the, number one gets the correct vertical level. Now we want to get the horizontal level, even with the interpupillary line. So if we look at his pupils of his eyes, we want this fairly level there.